I will do a countdown this time. I think it's best left to the proper sound effects, which our maestro Ravi will probably conduct in a Twitch in the near future. So welcome to Game Guru's Twitch broadcast. As usual, every Wednesday, 4 p.m., rain or shine, wind or snow. I shall be here, well, I or Ravi, to dispense many wisdoms about Game Guru. And we've had a request. We have had a request on... How do sounds work? How do you script sounds? How do you make sounds play in your game? All this kind of thing. I think we've covered it briefly about uh, assigning a sound, uh, but we've never actually done a whole broadcast dedicated to sounds. So what I'm going to do is spend a couple of minutes showing you the easy, easy way, just in case uh, it was sort of an elusive subject, and then I'm going to deep dive and show you every single Lua sound command and explain what each one does. And it includes some of really cool things that you may need to know if you want to do some interesting things in your game with zones. So I'm not going to babble on much longer. I'm going to go straight to it by launching Game Guru. And like I said, I'm going to start you off with what most people will do with zones. And fortunately, you don't have to script anything. No programming required, as it says on the tin. All you've really got to do is understand... Um, where the button is <laughs> to actually have your sound. So what we're going to start off with is something really simple. We've got a start marker, that's where you're going to start your game. And then you want to be able to trigger a sound when you enter a particular area of your level. So if we use a trigger zone, you can actually assign a script and have it trigger. But as you can see, there's something even easier. It's called um, sound zone. So if we click on this and go to properties, you can see right away there's almost nothing in here. Basically it includes the name of the uh, trigger zone, which is an arbitrary name, you just come up with a name that you want that's context sensitive to your game, so just make something up. Leave the script alone for now, but this is the, this is the magic uh, field here, sound zero. That's the sound it's going to play when you actually enter this zone. So if I just mark this area on the map by changing the floor texture so kind of know where we're going to trigger it and then we go to the rocket to test the level as it says on the tin we've put a sound zone down it's in there somewhere obviously the zone's invisible because you don't really want that sort of that semi-transparent polygon floating around in your game so when you walk in it and that click sound that was the sound that um, was default selected. If you wanted to change a sound, now we provide some sounds. We provide many sounds, in fact. But of course, you can add your own. So to start off the experiment, if you click on the right of this field here, it says audio bank slash misc and then some dots. There's a secret a button you can't see. If you click it, you can actually then see it. Basically, it allows you to open up a file requester and it starts you off in the audio bank folder. Now, tip one, always put your sounds in the audio bank folder. And I suggest you put it in user and you don't scatter it amongst all the other places. The file format you need is WAV, W-A-V. So it's a WAV file format. Make sure it's uncompressed, it's 16-bit and it's 44,000 um, megahertz or hertz, I think it's hertz. As, as the preferred format and make sure it's mono not stereo so good thing to remember all those things all these sounds that we provide already conform to those formats so I'm just going to the misc folder because I know there's a few random things in here and you'll notice there's explode.wav and that's pretty self-explanatory as you see it says it gives you the full path but as soon as you click apply changes and then you go back in you'll actually see it's a relative pass it figures out that the audio bank is you know where all the files are and then it's basically misc explode.wav you can enter it in manually but it's a lot easier just to use the file requester so now you can imagine when we run through it instead of the click sound that was by default selected to the sound zone and now it should make an explosion sound yeah so there you go it's that easy to change the sound that's triggered when you walk into a particular zone and of course, when you make your own WAVs, you drop into the users folder. I don't think we have any in the users folder. I just want to have a quick peek because this is um, a version we've used in a while. Yeah, we got Whoop. <laughs> I don't know whether the Whoop is actually part of your build or whether it's something I added. I hope it's not. It's nothing rude. Here we go. 
Okay, so it was just uh, the the hiss sound. I was probably going to change the wav something, some experiment. So yeah, you add your own wavs to the, then you can point to it, and that's how you do it. So that's how easy it is to create a sound effect. There's other entities that you'll find along your on, along the way. For example, if we can find this, which is an entity, it's a gate entity, and then we run that. You'll actually see that when we get near it, it says press E to open. Now listen when I press E. Yeah, so that's a different sound. And if we press E again, think. And if we actually look at the properties for the gate, let's just zoom in with the right mouse button. So we get a better view of it. And click properties on that one. You'll notice that this entity, unlike the sound zone, which only really has one field, to specify the sound. In a regular entity, you've actually got two slots. You've got sound 0 and sound 1. And the script, it's an arbitrary script. A script can use sound 0 and sound 1 in any way it sees fit. But in the case of the door.lua script, which is here, it has the implication that sound 0 will be open the door and sound 1 will be close the door. Now I'm thinking it's the same sound. It's chain gate open dot wav and chain gate open dot wav, yeah. So what if we change these? So instead of um, what we heard before, what if we just had some fun and said, you've got a goblin sound when you open it, and you've got a, um, what should we say, an ogre sound when you close it. And like I said, um, just like the uh, sound zone, you can make your own wabs and assign them in the appropriate place. And now when we open this gate, <laughs> there's a growl when you open it and an even bigger growl when you close it. But of course you'll want to choose all your own sounds. So those are the simple options to, to add sounds into your level. And you can obviously change sounds for every single entity in the game. You can create trigger zones, entities, things like that. But at some point you're going to want to create some logic to your sounds. When this happens, that sound plays. When this and this are true, then this sound is playing. When I'm cl not close to this entity, I want a sound to keep looping over and over and over. These sorts of things. For that kind of control, you're going to need to use Lua. Now, Lua is a scripting language that lets you write very, very simple logic for your game. And we're going to go and do a deep dive into every single command and totally explore it. So I suppose the first thing I want to do is have a basis for testing my script. So if I start from scratch, so start a new level, and we're going to start with a start marker. And then what we're going to do is use an entity as the basis for our sound experiments. And just to make it really ridiculous, I'm going to have, say, uh, what shall I? This, 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 uh, not this. Yeah, I have been experimenting with my folder, so don't worry that the names don't match the, uh, the pictures right now. It's just my own in development version. Yours will be lined up. So we'll make this guy a little bit bigger, it's a bit substantial, and then we can click properties, and as you can see he's using a default lower, and he's got no sound specified in 0 and 1, so it's kind of like the perfect, um, perfect entity. But there's one more thing we need to do, set static mode to no, because a static entity just gets, the jammer gets baked into the game. It, it removes all identity, it doesn't run any scripts, it's just raw geometry. That's all static entities do. For entities that can hold a script and play a script and hold sound information, it needs to be dynamic, so static equals null in this particular case. And now we've got that, we'll save it under, say, we'll call it um, test1fpm. And now we're going to create a brand new script, because I'm feeling brave today. I'm going to go into script bank. I'm going to select default.lua, copy and paste, and then I'm going to rename it to something that we're going to use. Let's call it um, Lee's Sound, not Lee Sound Test. And as always, once you've got your file name written, make sure that you're in it and your main function names reflect the file name. So there you go. And that's where we're going to put all our really cool, clever stuff. So we save that. Before we forget, we're going to go to our gargoyle. 
and then we're going to assign the same script to this entity. So lead sound test, dink. And for a sound, just so we've actually got a sound to start with, let's go find one. Maybe that explosion thing, that's a good... Oh, actually, no. How about that growl? Because that growl was pretty good coming from this, this statue. So let's say goblin. Apply changes. Now at the moment, if I save and run, nothing will actually happen because it's an empty script. Yes, we've assigned a sound, but there's now no logic, at least with the gate and the, the sound zone, there were some scripts already created for you that told the engine when to play the sound. With this, it's a blank script. It's look, I can run near it, I can run around it, I can jump up and down. It ain't going to do anything. I actually need to tell it how to play its scripts. Right, so we need to control that. So what I'm thinking is, the easiest way I think, is a distance check. And uh, rather than write it completely from scratch, I'm going to find out, uh, there it is, that's what I wanted to cut and paste into here. So this line will actually do get player distance, so it gets the distance between the entity, that's E, and the player, which is me, and I put it in a variable called player dist. If that distance is less than say 200, I, uh, then I do some action. Now the some action in this particular case is to play a sound. Now I bet you're wondering, well, how do I play a sound? Well, we've tried to keep the command set as logical as possible, so how about play sound? Well, what sound? How about clone uh, sound zero? So if we look back at the entity that we created, you notice it's got sound zero and sound one, and you've already got sound zero filled with a wav, but sound one doesn't have. If we look at the script, sound zero refers to that that zero there. So in theory, if you look at the logic of the script, it's going to go round and round and round and round, and then as soon as you get within 200 units of the entity, it should do a well, whatever the sound zero is, and then it plays it once. We may already be quite close, so we're going to move it further away and create a little path. Save that, and then we're going to run our experiment. In theory, when we get near the gargoyle, he growls. Oh, he does a goblin sound. <laughs> Classic. Okay, so he isn't playing his gargoyle sound. Right, now there are many, many reasons for this. The one I'm liking is the fact that it's constantly doing the player sound. That's why we can't actually hear it. So what I'm going to do, and it's a good piece of advice, is when you're doing a new script, make sure you've always got some debug on hand. So we're going to use the prompt command to tell us what's going on in our little world. So the first thing we're going to ask for is, what is the current distance to make sure that we start off outside the 200 range and so on and so forth, so we can run that. So it should start with a really big number, about 450 or something, yeah, 482, good guess. And then when you get less than 200, it should play the sound, but it isn't. So two things occur to me. One, it's constantly calling play sound, which it is, but then as soon as you leave the 200 it should start playing. The second one is play sound isn't the right command. So what I'm going to do is go to global.lua, which is the global script that holds everything, all the globals and all the function names, and we're going to look for that. Yes, it does have uh, the command, but look, here's our problem. It takes two parameters, not one. It has to take the entity index number. What I mean by that is, it's not enough to say play sound zero, because the question then is, what sound zero? There are, could be hundreds of entities in your game. Which entity are you referring to when you say sound zero? So the E value contains the index to that particular entity. So you see E has been passed around quite a lot because it's you need this as a sort of context. So now we have that. I'm pretty confident it will play. But as I said before, we also know it's going to keep playing. It's going to play sound, play sound, play sound. And it will repeat from the beginning, so you'd never actually see hear the sound. You hear a sort of a da -da 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 sort of noise. So we need some sort of flag to control that. Now, as I said before, good thing to do with globals is to use the name of your script, and then you can come up with any globals that you like. So what we're going to say is a uh, let's just say trigger equals zero. That's our global variable, a little box where we can store a value, 
and we're going to do a condition which says we're only going to call play sound if the contents is zero. But as soon as we actually get to this point, we set it to one. So it will only call play sound once. A nice simple flag. Now we're going to run that. Okay, now here we go. Running for the gargoyle. <laughs> yeah, perfect. So the round number of parameters and a flag make sure that we have a script that does what it needs to do. Now what I want to do is give you a guided tour. Now we've understood the idea of easy use of sounds, how to create a script, how to make a sound play in the script. What I'd like to do is give you a tour of the sound commands. Fortunately, in searching for play sound, we managed to land into the big group. And as you can see, there's quite a few sound commands we can explore today. Um, I'll fall short of play video, although it could technically go into the same category. And we go to our script. We don't need door anymore. And what I want to do is get all the names. And I'm going to comment them out for now. We've already got play sound, so we don't need that. Right. The first one, the first one I want to demonstrate, pretty cool. It means you don't need this uh, trigger. So if we commented out all this earlier code, and we'll show you what it would have done if you did what you thought made sense with basic logic. If you're less than 200, then play the sound, right? This is what would have happened. If I just run that. Now the flag isn't preventing it being called more than once, it's going to call it as many times as you were inside the 200 range, so let's see what happens. Can you hear that little vibrator? <laughs> that was the sound going uh, over and over and over again, playing infinitesimally. And what you need to do is control that. And another command that you can use to make your life a little bit easier is this one. So play sound if silent. Same sort of thing. Just a different command. And what that says is only play the sound if the sound isn't already playing. Yeah? Makes sense? Okay. So if we run it, the idea is it will play a sound, it will try and play a sound again, but then it's like, oh, the uh, sound's already playing. So it won't bother repeating it. Till it gets to the end, the player stops, and then it may play it again. So what we should hear is a repeated sound as it's going uh, gobbling, gobbling, gobbling for the full sequence. So here we go. So there you go. That's what that command does. Can be useful sometimes, say, when you want to trigger something off. And then you're never going to call it again, but you don't really want to. If it's like a condition which might be true for quite a while before it moves on, you don't want it going duh, 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 and then playing the sound because it just wouldn't sound quality. So that's uh, the silent one. Play non 3D sound. No. The idea of this sound is that it's, it's a 3D sound. Okay? So what we're going to do is going to reactivate our trigger and we're going to set it to 1 when we are within range. But then what we're going to do is have a new condition which says if the trigger is 1, we're going to set it back to 0, we're going to leave it on 1 and we're going to just start playing this over and over again. So the idea is that when we run it, once we've triggered this gargoyle, to start playing is going to keep playing. I'll give you three guesses which syntax I have forgotten again. I think I might rewrite Lua to remove the need for a then. Okay, let's try this. So we're going to get near the statue, it's going to trigger the flag, now the flag is going to continually play the zone, separate of the proximity to the entity. So as I move away, yeah, so that flag is always set to one. So now we can actually do something else. We can um, uh, set the volume. So in addition to playing that, we can set the volume of the sound. Now you notice there's only actually one parameter here. So the volume isn't per entity, it's an override. A volume override. So you heard the sound of that before. If we set it to like 30% before we play the sound and then run it, 
As I say, it's been a while since I've been doing the sewing commands, so I'm a bit foggy on exactly the best way to uh, demonstrate everything, but believe it or not, it actually is playing right now. But the way sewn works is on decibels, and it's zero is the minimum decibel range, and then 100 is the maximum decibel range. If I set it to 100 just to prove the command kind of works. The thing with the human ear is we only actually perceive um, decibels within a certain range. And there you go. But that occupies only about the top 80% of the overall scale. I don't know why. Um, this is actually sitting upon a direct sound layer. And I don't know why, but sort of 0 to 60 or 0 to 70 is, is almost inaudible. And so only the upper band of the volume actually does anything in my experience. So we'll set it to 80, it should be a bit quieter, or a lot quieter. Now if I whisper, you can just about hear it. <laughs> so, as you can see, you think that quietness, it should be like 20%, but it's not. Uh, at 70, it will probably completely inaudible unless you, you really strain at your speakers or turn your volume up. So it's just the nature of how decibels work. And uh, that is one more off, so we can keep that. Also, speed's a pretty cool one as well. Again, it looks like one parameter, so it's a global function. Now, remember before I was talking about the format, the ideal format for a sound file is 16-bit, mono, WAV, uncompressed, and 44,000 hertz. Well, if we put that, 44,000 hertz, and then save and play. And now we should hear the same. All be very quietly. So what we're going to do is restore the volume to say 95, that should be quite low, 97. What if we doubled this to 88,000 hertz? Basically, the speed is, is is also the frequency of the sound, and it basically describes how quickly it's going to push the sound into the sound buffer. And now at 88,000, it's it's going to push it twice as much into the sound buffer, and when it crams in, it's going to get faster, as as, as I'll demonstrate right now. So you see, it's a higher pitch. Now, if we get crazy with this and go to, say, 150, it should be higher pitch still. And you can imagine, instead of a hard-coded value, you could use a variable, which means you can actually affect the sounds um, of your game um, dynamically, which is pretty cool. So the pitch isn't as high as I would think, um, if it is any, it's very subtle, so it could be this needs to be placed elsewhere, sort of highlights my lack of knowledge. In exactly where this is placed, maybe it's placed in the init, or maybe the values need to be bigger, but in theory, setting sound speed, like so, and I, I, we got it from the global, so we know it's only one parameter. So set sound speed, frequency, one parameter, yeah. So that's definitely what you need to do, and you can actually change the pitch. Um, of course, the volume you've already seen. Of course, at some point you're going to want to stop the sound. So the good way of doing that is another demonstration. If that we get further than say, oh, what should we say, 700 units, then you can call. Well, you need to call two things, won't you? Not only we need to set the trigger to zero, just so it would stop constantly playing the sound, but you also need to stop the sound immediately. And V is, of course, whether it's 0 or 1, so we want to stop sound 0. And even if it's in the middle of its growl, this will actually stop it, which we're going to demonstrate. I'll move that a bit closer so it's 400, so we're not running around all over the map. So when we get closer than 200, it will start its growling, but once we get further than 400, we'll actually stop it. So that's closer. And then as we get further away, it stops. See, even if it was in the middle of a growl, watch this. See, just a little snort, and then it actually stopped. So that's how stop sound works. 
And my favourite, and again reduces the amount of logic that you actually need. Remember here, we've actually set a trigger flag, and then when it's set to 1, we're actually going to keep playing over and over using the play sound if silent. But there's an easier way of doing it. So again, what we're going to do is set, uh, get rid of trigger altogether. We're going to comment out this other stuff here. We're also going to comment out that. We're commenting out vast tracks of our uh, code, actually, to be introduced with just one piece of code, which is loop sound. Now, loop sound, if you can imagine, is going to have the same problem as we had when we did play sound. It will keep going ding, 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 and play it over and over. So I'm going to confirm that by running it. Hopefully, I've not introduced a syntax error. So as we get closer to 200, yeah, so the, the loop sound automatically knows that if you call it over and over again, it's not going to restart it because it's in a loop mechanism. So all that code has been replaced with just the loop sound command, which is like one command. So that's pretty cool. So now we've done loop, we've done stop, we get rid of those. Play non-3D sound. You can do that if you wanted the sound to be associated, not with the entity, um, but with the player. Traditionally, something like a gun sound, like bang, 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 it's going to come from yourself, it's going to come from the weapon that you're holding. And that's treated slightly differently than a regular entity sound out in the 3D world. And what this command does, very simply, it plays it as though it was playing from the player itself. So it's actually coming from the, say, the head of the player, or the camera position, to be more accurate. And again, that would just E comma zero. And let's see if you can guess what would happen if I actually substitute that with that without any further conditions. You could almost imagine what's going to happen. But uh, I'm going to let you guess it and then see what actually happens. Can you hear the buzzing? That's exactly what happened when we did the play sound, you see. You needed that flag in order to which only trigger it once. So I think now we've gone through everything from play sound down to set sound volume. That's all the current Lua commands for controlling sound. And of course you've got play video and stop video, which has sound built into it. So if you've got like an, uh, a WMV file and you play it, that WMV file can contain sound. So you, there's no need to say play video and then play sound. The video can actually contain the sound. But there's no reason why you can't just have a video only, so no sound WMV file, and then trigger different sounds over the top of it as you see fit. So you can do that as well. So one last thing I'd like to show. Um, it's always my intention with these broadcasts to try and squeeze the pertinent stuff into the first 30 minutes so you don't have to dedicate a whole hour of your most valuable day to listening to all this stuff. So one last thing I'd like to show you is having multiple sounds in the Lua script. So we're going to keep with the idea of our trigger. So we set trigger there, we set that to 1, we reinstate that which says you're only going to play this once and then we're going to play a, let's say just play a regular sound because that is my favourite command. Play sound 0, save, retest before we go any further. The idea is that when we get within 200 units of the gargoyle it should do the play sound 0 command. Great. And then what we're going to do is go back into the entity properties for the gargoyle and we're going to choose a secondary sound. So sound 1, click to the right of this field and then you can pick something... What are these demon ones? Oh, I haven't had any idea what them are. Fantasy... Evil priest. <laughs> okay. Apply changes, which makes sure that the sound is remembered. And then all you've got to do, once you've actually changed the properties before you click test game, is trigger the other sound. So what if I just change 0 to 1? What do you think might happen? Well, that's pretty clear. You're now going to use that second sound, not the first sound. So it's going to use sound 1. So let's hear what evil priest sound like. <laughs> A very hollowed out <laughs> evil priest. I suppose. So what if we did both together? Yes you can. You can actually overlap sounds, no problem at all. So we're going to play sound 0 and sound 1 at the same time. So that would be a growl and a hollow priest noise. So let's see what happens. Yeah. Okay, okay. And not only that, if you liked to keep the fun going, where are we? We can actually set that to loop and loop, and it'll just keep playing over and over and over again forever. 
And of course, you can control when these various sounds are triggered. You can, you know, have entities which need both of them triggered at the same time. You can have ones which have different sounds for different purposes, etc. Now, here's another notice thing you might have noticed. Because this, all right, I'll just quit for a second. Actually, yeah. because the sounds are different lengths, when they loop, they loop and they restart at different times. You know, it's like a car going round a circuit and one car goes at 10 miles an hour and one goes down at 20 miles an hour. So the car at 10 miles an hour will go around once whilst the car at 20 miles an hour goes around twice. So in effect, um, that one car is playing the sound twice where the other one gets one sound out and that's the way it works and that's why when you loop sound, don't assume they're going to loop synchronously. They both have to be exactly the same length as well. And if I just nip into the root and go to audio bank, this is where you'll find all the sounds that you can play around with. You notice we support not only WAV, but OG. That's an OG Vorbis format. It's as good compression as MP3, but there's no license restrictions, so I highly recommend if you have a very large sound effect or some music that you crunch it down into an OG file and then use an OG file instead of a WAV. That way you'll... Uh, appease your end users who don't want to download 17 gigabytes of game um, when, <laughs> when 14 gigabytes of it is some WAF file. And as you can see, these are hard-coded, well, I won't say hard-coded, but they are preset folders to tell the AI system all the different sounds it might need. But you can actually use those as well inside Buried Deep. You'll actually find the sounds. I think I can play that for you. Like so. <laughs> and demons and you've got fantasy you've got materials now these are used by the footfall system so when you walk on different surfaces like grass and metal and wood and stone the engine automatically knows which sounds to play when you walk on them when you throw things at them when you scrape along them so all those you can still use those you just link into them if you want we've got a, a little collection of miscellaneous WAF files we've got some music uh, in the form of OGs and WAVs and some other, I mean this one's pretty cool, the escape because it's all the different music for the different parts of the game, so the title screen the end screen in, inside the game itself, so those are pretty cool and stories, so they've got particular levels in our uh, default stock which needs different kinds of WAVs, then you've actually got those there uh, user, that's reserved for where you can put all your own WAVs so you don't, I wouldn't say contaminate the other folders, but at least you know where your WAVs are and if you did a reinstall, there's only one folder you need to loop to copy and back up. Whereas trying to rescue all the WAVs from all the different places you may have scattered them uh, will be a bit difficult. Purchased, of course, is if you've bought a WAV, uh, a sound or a music file from the store, you'll find it in that purchased folder, so that's where you'll find it. Voices, that's, um, if I go into the player one, all the different noises that the player itself makes are stored here but then you can tap into those if you wish. And similarly with zombies, zombies have their own special folder. Ideally you'd think it would probably be put somewhere else, but uh, at the time these assets were assembled, we decided we're going to have lots of zombie noises, so we're going to put them there. And actually, little secret, we do actually have lots and lots of zombie wabs that we've actually commissioned, tested, they work great, they sound good. we just not had an opportunity to drop them in and link them in with our current zombie assets. So expect an improvement in that area at some point. So just shy of the, uh, um, on the wrong direction of the 30 minutes I wanted to cram all the sound stuff into, um, I'm going to quick look at the chat board because we are live tweeting and it affords people an opportunity to ask questions, not just about what I'm rambling on about, but absolutely anything about Game Guru. Um, and basically, there is a full page of greetings, so I don't really need to uh, scroll too much. There is a lot of question marks. <laughs> Pirate Mike knows my panache, uh, my idiosyncrasy, where question marks means I actually stop and pause and look at it for a bit which is why he's put one, two, three, four, seven question marks on his chat. His question is, will we be able to call a sound in Lua without having to use sound zero or sound one slots on an entity? Great question. I suppose what he means is something like, and something I would probably be an, a massive advocate for, is this, load sound brackets into that entity, um, audio bank, mine 
nicezone.wav into slot 2 or 6 or 87 and then I can do play zone E 87 or even better get rid of the E you can actually globally load some WAVs into memory and then play a set of global sound indices as well. Why would you do that? Well, if you have entities, a lot of entities in your game, but you really um, don't want to gobble up all your memory, because remember every time you load in a WAV it has to sit in system memory and eats all the available memory for that might be needed for other things. If you had a global list of WAVs indexed you know, by a value and then just play those, that might be but certainly will help the memory and providing you're organized um, be a very efficient way to store and then play all your sounds so load sound I would definitely be entertaining that if it ever crawled to the top of the uh, community voting list I think there is some e feature in there about sound and this might squeeze into that but if there isn't then please add this recommendation to the voting board um, because <laughs> Any ideas expressed in this Twitch broadcast have the half-life of about 20 minutes before I switch the stop record button and then get back to debugging. So uh, please remind me via the uh, community of our own boards because I think Lord Sound would be a really cool feature. But in answer to your the immediate question, can I do Lord Sound? No. That sound doesn't exist, it's just a figment of Lee's imagination right now. But I think it's a really cool idea, as well as the global sound list as well not particularly difficult to implement either just has to be it has to bully its way past all the other things that the community want right now and we're quite a small team so bear with us um, please <laughs> um, Game Guru suggests that these seven question marks might suggest there's a question in there I think there was yes so thanks for that pointer um, uh, VRG is having some troubles with Twitch he says it's a three advertisements in a row uh, poor sod. I hope you catch most of what I was talking about. If not, you can actually grab the entire broadcast. We export them to YouTube and then we have a web page which shows you how to get at them. Now, I asked that the list be added to our website. Whether it's here now, it doesn't look like it is. I think it's probably a private link right now. But we do have a website link that takes you to all of these broadcasts. Um, and we're over 20 odd now, we've got 20 odd broadcasts which is pretty cool so lots of information for you guys and uh, if somebody reminds me or posts the link if they know it I can repeat it in this broadcast before I click the stop button um, Synchromesh asks how about fading sound yeah um, good question and I thought we supported per entity volume until I saw a lower global list as you can see, set sound volume only has one parameter. So your fading sound would be fading the master sound. It would fade everything in your game out, which I think we'll all agree isn't appropriate. What if there's some background music playing? Or there's some gunfire off in, and to the left and maybe you're picking something up. But you only want like a particular generator to cough and splutter and then fade out, or something like that. Well, you would need another command. You need set sound volume with an E. So you can specify it per entity. And as you can see in a fine list, we don't have that command right now. So you can add that to the list of sound commands much requested. And uh, as I said, it's not particularly difficult to add. We just don't have it in this version right now. So please remind me when the time is right. Um, Werma asks, play character sound? Question mark. Yeah. Yeah, you've noticed some more sound commands. Great! <laughs> it looks like I didn't squeeze it all into uh, 30 minutes. So I'm going to show you these. Set character sound set, set character sound, play character sound. I'm not even going to go here because this is probably a whole hour all by itself. The interactive dynamic music system, which was implemented quite a while ago. Never really subsequently used it for any of my own levels and my own experiments. So it remains a big enigma wrapped in an eggshell. So we're probably going to have to do some pre-research to find out all the nuances of this. And then I can actually introduce a proper way of um, explaining it and how to use it. But yeah, it's really cool. The dynamic music system lets you change the music in tempo with what's happening in your games. It's pretty awesome. 
So yeah, uh, set character sewn set is a pretty easy one, and the best way to demonstrate it is to actually show you a script I prepared earlier, which is of course the soldier. So you'll encounter this set character sewn set E. Now you would have expected this one that's commented out E comma soldier, but you want set character sewn set. What that actually does, if I drop in a soldier now into my would be game and then have a look at his properties he's currently blank so when it's blank it basically defaults to the soldier folder which I can show you I think I briefly encountered it it's here you see audio bank character soldier contains all these default wabs and if you actually specify um, set character sound set but in the properties don't mention anything it defaults to soldier but what you can do if you wanted to is change this to something else for example let's have a look at some um, characters bunny for example so if inside here we put bunny and then click apply changes what's going to happen is it's going to load in the character sound set not for the default soldier but for the the bunny and when the bunny um, sees you, he makes this sound. <laughs> so that's what that's for, you see. So it defaults the soldier, but you can change that. And that's what that does. It points this soldier, this character, to a, an entire set of wabs that it can use as part of its AI system. If we go back to global, through the next one, uh, you've got optionally, you can set strings. So in addition to relying on the sound set, you can specify any folder. You can imagine this could be a prelude to the load sound functionality. So you can actually specify by name what you want to load in as the uh, the set of sounds for the character. And then the final one, play character sound e-commerce str, that actually uh, could specify what sound you want to play. So if we look for that in the script, I'll give you an example. You say play character sound the entity number then on alert. So what it's going to do is look inside the, the, the folder you'd preset. So let's say we set Bunny as the sound set. And it looks for on alert. It finds it in there. And then you'll notice that there is 0.wav, 1.wav, and 2.wav. In order to create a more varied soundscape for your game, it's not one wav. The engine has the ability to randomly choose between a number of wavs and play one. So here you can see you've got three possible alternatives you can play. So it will choose one at random and then play it. And that's what that command does. So providing you're actually editing an entity character, you'll appreciate you've now got a lot more capabilities when it comes to sounds. Sounds for when a character sees you or gets disturbed, uh, shouting to his, his, his fellow soldiers to flank you or something, or he's just about to throw a grenade, he might say something in that regard. So on alert, can be pretty much any folder that you create at this level because it will just it will just tag it all together with a sound set and then load the 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 wabs in so that's kind of how that works so it's a bit of a complicated subject i mean i could write scripts from scratch but again that would probably take another broadcast to really dive into it but hopefully it gives you a sort of a glimpse as to how it's used and the script that actually uses it so you can play around with the script that works and then slowly refine it into something else um, so hopefully that gives you a little bit of a a clue. It's just some more sound commands that I, I forgot about talking about. Um, so uh, VIG says that's great. So thanks. I hope that was helpful. And uh, Lee, I saw it in the forums. Thanks. Okay, great. Ravy, many question marks. In fact, I think he's gone for what's it? Eleven question marks. Uh, Ravy asks. In game guru, you can look at previous broadcasts by going to video tutorials and clicking on the bottom link. Yes, he has provided the link. Great. So let me just do a little cut and paste. Because I actually have two screens open, don't you know? And now when I go into here, I can paste that. Yep, so there's the uh, link for you. It's game-guru.com forward slash live dash streams for dash read hyphen. And this is all the broadcasts that we've done every Wednesday since the dawn of time. Well, not the dawn of time. Since whenever Broadcast 1 was broadcast. And come rain or shine, like I said, we will be twitching 
<laughs> every Wednesday around 4 p.m. So we're currently at broadcast 21. This should be broadcast 22, but I'm going to find that out as soon as I export a bit later. So that's how you're going to find it. And as I said, we covered more subjects. You know, even the st stuff that I didn't think you could do. I mean, Ravi hosted one uh, for broadcast 19 when I was otherwise engaged in other countries. And he actually created lifts and conveyor belts that I didn't even think Gamguru could do yet. So that's the power of Lua. It really is. So if you wanted to find out some really advanced stuff, check out broadcast 19. So returning back to the uh, chat, so there, there is a question mark uh, from uh, Oneros. He asks, so if I want to load a character sound set of my own, I have to do it with Lua. Uh, no, absolutely not. Um, it's as simple as this. You go into Audio Bank, into Characters, pick Soldier, cut and paste, give a name of your own, so my monster. And then proceed to change all the WABs in each of these folders were present. Like that. So you change all the WABs, so they're your own WABs. And then make sure that the spelling is completely accurate. You go to your soldier, you go to properties, you put my monster in sound set, you click apply changes, you can then run your game, and now it will actually do all the WABs that you've put in there. No lower scripting required. You just have to change the sound set to one of your own devising. So that's how you do it. Um, Ravi also responded in in the same vein, but on the chat. But it's nice that I actually do it in the video, otherwise you, you won't get any of this information when you actually watch it on YouTube. Uh, did, 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 uh, Ravi also adds, because it was I think it was Ravi that contributed to or entirely wrote the uh, the sound set system for characters and he says the maximum randoms is four so that's uh, zero index zero one two and three so you can't have what four dot wav five dot wav six dot wav it will just ignore those so you can have up to four zero dot wav through to three dot wav so that's how that works as uh, anaris was requesting uh, a question mark pack okay we'll think about it <laughs> we'll add it to the list and I think that's it. I've got to the end of the chat. We are now 48 minutes into the broadcast. I've answered all the questions. As always, I'm going to open up the floor. If anyone's got any questions, this is what I'm here for for the next five minutes. Happy to answer any reasonable questions. So in the meantime, I'm going to have a bit of fun changing this guy to a bunny. Like so. And in order that we can have a bit of a laugh, I'm going to increase my health so I can last a bit longer and give myself an ability to shut him up by arming myself with a magnum with a thousand bullets in it. And save my magnificent octopus. And he should see me quite quickly. I think. Ooh. <laughs> In fact, that was so much fun, I am going to make more of him. Yay. Okay, chat pack, you've got four more minutes to use a question mark. I'll tell you what, though, my health isn't going to last very long. Oh. Ah, yeah. Okay. I need a bigger weapon. So, what do we have on the menu today? Well, we have many things actually, but I think the one I'm probably going to go for is grenades. A thousand grenades, please. Eat my dust. <laughs> yeah, you want it. Run away. Now, the, uh, of course, you can't run backwards as quick as you can run forward, you see. Which is why I had to turn around a bit and hopefully my grenades will 
have the desired effect. They're not really accurate, these grenades. I suppose that's the point, really. Maybe I need more grenades. Actually, that reminds me of a really cool weapon. Some kind of grenade thing where you could throw five grenades at once. That would be awesome. Yeah. I blew myself up in the end. And I didn't re- oh yeah. That's the benefit of a dynamic statue, you see. You can actually move it with physics. Now, if you didn't want that, it's an important lesson, actually. If you wanted it to have all the properties of a dynamic entity, playing sounds and scripts and stuff, but you don't want to blow it off its hinges, there is another property called Is Immobile. You set that to yes, and I'm going to learn from your lesson, and I want something that's more powerful. I want more health to begin with, but do we have in the house a rocket launcher? Do we have a rocket launcher? Yes, we do. This is a bit more targeted. So now, I should be able to rocket launch the smeg out of that gargoyle and it won't move an inch. So here we go. Yes. It takes longer to reload, but by far a more effective weapon. Aha. Of course as well, the increased health protects my Born self from the out, out, the out pouring of energy from this. Oh, there you go. Catch it in the air. <laughs> you can actually do that. If you can have a weapon fly into the air, you can catch it in the air and then aim this up with it. It's pretty cool. So, as you can see, when I try and blow the base of this up, because it is immobile, it ain't moving. But it still has all the properties of the script. And there is a debate right now in the beta testing forum. Should an entity that has been set to is immobile also take damage? I simply cannot remember whether that was actually a legacy feature or whether it is now a bug. So I'd like some opinions on that, and perhaps in the forums and stuff. I've noticed some more questions as uh, my appeal has been answered. And this is another one from Aneros. So what about an entity that does not have a sound pack? Well, it just will be silent. If you've not assigned any sound, uh, it would just be very quiet because it's not playing any sound. Um, so you bought a wolf from the store that has no sounds. Well, that's entirely up to the artists. Uh, in the asset store, most of the content is done by third-party artists who get to decide how much they're going to do with the entity. Some people just do a static entity with a single texture. Some people do a static entity with multiple textures. Other ones attribute scripts so the entity can do things. And yet again, other artists apply sound effects, unique sound effects to those entities so they can actually make sounds whilst they're doing their particular thing. And the list goes on. Some artists put LOD in their entities so they're more efficient at further distances. And it's basically how long is a piece of string. If we actually forced artists into this very rigid set of pipeline requirements and what they had to do before they could publish in the store, it would be a frustrating experience and no one would publish anything. Which means you wouldn't have the tabletops and the chairs and the buildings and the creatures and the enemies and the bric-a-brac that you would need to make an interesting game level. So we kind of lower that requirement for this exacting entity standard. You can do all that and obviously it will be a better entity and it will make more sales so the artists are incentivized to do it on those on those reasons but we don't insist that all these things are introduced. We like to keep it like an open playing field and then you know if somebody creates something that someone else likes then that connection has been made and we, we, you know we like to see that so we're not going to add restrictions for its own sake. Um, so that's why there's no sounds in the wolf, but uh, certainly you contact the artist and say please add some sounds and maybe they will, or maybe they won't. Uh, VRG says, is it possible the burst stays green when I start a new game or is it a bug, it happens in bed 33? Um, it's a bug. It's a bug and we fixed it. 
But the burr, I've simplified it, the burr actually represents current system memory. Um, so it used to be this convoluted calculation on what a unique new level would actually hold in terms of memory. But it all got very confusing and it wasn't very accurate. So now it basically takes the amount of memory you've used before you've done anything and then it records how much system memory is live at that particular moment in your session. And obviously the grand reset is the ultimate. If you actually end up with that green bar is quite high with the new beta 30 whatever the next one is, um, just leave Gengaru and come back and it, it wipes out all the system memory and can start again. And we've also been discussing plans where Gengaru will automatically refresh its fragmented memory. Automatically. So when you load a new level or you start a level from new, it would do it for you. And it, it, but it adds an extra like five seconds onto the to, to the new level thing and we didn't really want to add more delay onto your experience. So that one is still up for debate and we're happy to receive any feedback on that. And uh, uh, Rave has just re uh, confirmed that that has been fixed in the chat window. Uh, we have a couple of minutes left. I've, I've seen a question mark, so this will probably be the last question. Um, Onuris gets in the last question. And uh, Matt Parrot Mac has already answered it, but I'm going to do it for the purposes of this broadcast. Uh, in order for the wolf to sound, should I make a sound pack and add it as uh, previously stated? Um, yeah, you could do it that way. You could go into the script and just add a place sound zero and then go into the entity and then add any sound that you want and then it will play that sound because the script has told it to play the sound and that's how it works. So that's sound. That's lots and lots of sound information both at the easy level where you just change entity properties and at the icky end where you have to do a little bit of programming in Lua. And of course, there's more sound commands. Like so, the dynamic music is a whole other subject. So, if you want to talk about that, um, certainly make a recommendation in the post. I think I'll show you the website where you can actually do that. It's forums, and you'll find it in product chat. And it's a sticky right at the top called Twitch Sessions. Just write what you'd like to hear about next week and every Wednesday, and we'll actually put that in for you. No problem at all. So, until next week, where it may not be me. We are currently thinking about pushing Ravi into the limelight once more to talk about Blender and importing and all that kind of cool stuff because I think that's a great subject. It shows you have to get a lot more assets than our humble selves can produce and our third party artists army. There's millions of 3D models and textures out there that you can have access to and our import capabilities are there ready for you to use but it's not necessarily as easy as say just dragging something in so maybe that's something Ravi covers next week but until then I'd like to thank you for your attention I'll say goodbye and uh, leave you to that music if I can find it so bye there it is